Hey guys, what's up? I hope the weather over there is very very cloudy and today it has to be because today's video is all about clouds and I'm sure there's never a day you have not looked up at the sky and each time you look at it, there are always different forms of clouds beautifying the sky. Their density, color and shape keep fluctuating which creates different scenes at different times. Sometimes the cloud is massive, sometimes it streaks and sometimes scattered like cotton. And if you try to create a natural scene in Blender without realistic looking clouds, the scene won't be complete if it wasn't for cloudscapes. Making cloudy renders wouldn't have been this easier. We 3D artists know that very well. That's why the folks at B Production have come up with Cloudscapes, a hyper-realistic clouds collection which includes 11 categories of clouds and 211 different clouds according to the real clouds. And the great thing is, it works with both EV and Cycles. It's available on Blender Market, I will have the link in the description down below in case you want to grab it. Time is the most valuable thing which you can definitely save with it. And just to organize this video for your ease, I have divided it into chapters. With all that being said, let's jump straight to it. So you will get these two files. One is .rar file and the other one is .scatpack, which we'll take a look at later in this video. Extract the compressed .rar file using 7-zip or WinRAR. After that, you can delete this file if you want to. Now open up Cloudscapes folder and when you see the cloudscape.blend, just simply copy the location of that file path, go over to edit, preferences, under file paths, click this plus icon right here and then paste that directory right here. Hit save, then close preferences. So go right over here, click and drag to split the view, change it to asset browser right here. And from current file, you have to change it to cloudscapes. And here you will see that we have all the clouds sorted into their corresponding categories. You can choose any of the clouds from here and the one you want to import, just simply click and drag it into your viewport. And this is how easy it is. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the default cube and the default light. By default, all the clouds are rotated at 90 degrees. So press N on your keyboard and then go over to item, change the X value to 90. Press N to get rid of this panel and then just make a bit of space right here. So here you can see that we have the cloud right here. The first thing we're gonna do is go to render properties panel, change your render engine from EV to cycles. This is important because cycles is physically accurate render engine, means you will get realistic renders. After that, go to render view and you can see that it's uh, dark and that's because we need sun or a sky inside of Blender. So to add sky, go over to world properties. Under color, you can see that little dot right here. Click it, change to sky texture right here perfect and the intensity is way too high so let's just decrease it to about 0.25 this is way better and you can already see the quality of the cloud but there are a lot of settings which we can tweak to make it more realistic so go over to world properties panel scroll right down here under light paths increase the volume to maybe 10 20 or 30 Depending on the quality you want, you can increase it, but not that it will also increase your render times. So I'm gonna choose around 25 and here you can see the light is scattering through the cloud way better. Here is uh, with 0 volume and here is with 25 volume. So you can see the difference right here. Now there's a other way you can change the quality of the volume. So under volumes, you will see that we have max steps. You can decrease these max steps to get a better viewport but it will also keep the volume but it will look blocky so i highly recommend you play around with the max steps values to get the best result and the best viewport performance as well let's take a look at how we can customize it so i'm just gonna go ahead and change this window type to shader editor from here you can see that we have principal volume shader applied to it now there are a couple of things you can change the first thing is the color, of course. You can make it black. You can change the density of the cloud, which is really cool. You can also animate this if you want to. Right here, you can see that we have these other values that we can change. And you can also plug in some more nodes to get the result that you want and customize these to your liking. So in this video, I'm not gonna go deep into this. And the other amazing feature of the cloud is you can change the temperature attribute to density by typing in density. Now what you can do is you can increase the black body intensity right here and decrease the temperature to right around maybe 200, 100 or even lower. And this will make your cloud look like a fireball. 
And there you go, you have converted your cloud into a firewall. And you can animate this however you want. And I think this is good for a still render image if you want to make it fiery. Well, if you want to add a lot of clouds to fill the sky, then doing that is gonna be very time consuming. To save you time, Bproduction also provides you with presets. To use those presets, you need to download the Biome Reader. I will have the link to this site in the description down below. Just fill the required information and you will get an email with the download link. Biome Reader is made available by the folks at BD3D, the creators of GeoScatter, one of the best scatter add-on for Blender, packed with amazing features. I have a video about it coming soon. So subscribe and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss that. Open up a new scene and then go over to edit, preferences and install the biome reader add-on that you have downloaded or if you already have geoscatter you can just use that don't need to download the biome reader because geoscatter has built-in biome reader. So I'm gonna use geoscatter in this video and if you would like to get geoscatter I will have the link in the description down below of it as well. So once you enable geoscatter or biome reader you will see this long preference menu just click on enter manager it will take you to a new window inside of the preferences and right here under preferences of the geoscatter you will have an option to install a package this is going to be the dot scat file that we have downloaded with cloudscapes and by the way the interface will be pretty much the same with biome reader i'm gonna go ahead and install that scat pack right here install package and you also have to click on search for dot blend file in the given paths add path and then give it the same location which we gave to asset browser version and make sure to save preferences press n on your keyboard and you will have a geoscatter add-on panel right here press shift a and then add a plane and this is going to be the emitter for clouds just select this right here close all of these menus and only look for the biome scatter open biomes and it will open up the preferences and under biomes you can see that we have all the different presets that are made available by B production for you to use now i'm gonna go ahead and uh, add cloudscape 15 which is the 15th preset in the list and you will see a loading screen which means it's importing all of the clouds and then you can close preferences right here under tweak you can see that we have all these different clouds which it has imported right now you can't see anything right here because Clouds are way big and this plane is way too small. Go over to edit mode and then press S and scale it all up right here. And soon you will start seeing the clouds. And right now our viewport limit has reached to max. So we are going to go over to view and then change to right around maybe 9000 meters or 10,000 meters. Then you can see that we have the clouds right here. And just like in real life, all of the clouds with their density are separated into different altitudes. They are also pretty much real, which makes it even more interesting. Now if I just go to the world properties, add a sky, decrease the strength to around 0.1, go over to rendered view and you can see the clouds. And if you don't want to see this plane right here, you can just go over to object properties, under visibility, ray visibility, turn off everything. And this will not render out in the final image and for the viewport i'm also going to turn this off as well and here you can see that we have the clouds and of course it makes sense if you have environment i currently don't have it but that's just how this works again i'm gonna increase some volume to around five which is pretty good actually and I'm gonna go over to viewport shading, go over to geoscatter panel. Right here you can select each cloud and customize the position, the scale and density of the cloud however you want. There are no limitations. Let's say I want to increase density. I will just use the count and I will make a few of these. Then I will select the other one. And if you want to increase your viewport performance, you can just turn these off by clicking this monitor icon right here. But not just only the density of the clouds, you can also customize the rotation, the scale, scatter them in patterns. You can remove the clouds which are not in the camera, so on and so forth. Stay tuned for a video which I will be releasing very soon. That's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. And if you made it this far, consider liking the video, share it with your friends if you think this will help them. If you're new here, hit subscribe to never miss any of my future uploads. Thanks for watching, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.